And then the existing site plan to the northern element where you've got the um, late grass that says the open space and the boundary treatment there to the existing depot site. You can see there the residential properties um, that obviously were referred to in the report and any comments received and sports facilities adjacent to the site. So the proposed site plan again is split into two. So this is the area of the car park and the car park extension. And then this is the proposed new storage area um, that's the extension of the depot. Some more detailed plans there. So more detailed view of the extension of the depot. As you can see, the track running through it to provide access, with access being created through the existing boundary. Um, this area being laid to a, a granular surface finish. New perimeter fencing being erected around the site, so that's where I refer to a condition asking for further details on, on that final element, and a planting buffer being created here. So as you'll have seen in the report, um, the purpose of this extension is to provide additional storage, and that relates to additional storage for recycling facilities, um, green weed bins and, and other elements that go with um, domestic recycling. And that also relates to increased capacity for the site as a whole for uh, adverse weather um, storage, so gritting and other things that needed for flooding. So that's the purpose behind the application, to provide additional storage for those two elements of uh, work that is done at the site. And then the proposed um, extension to the car park. So the car park is being extended in this location. And as you can see from comparison to the existing plan, it's also being reconfigured in terms of the spaces to provide additional spaces. Um, and again, in terms of condition, uh, we're requiring a, a management plan for that area to ensure that the extra parking is used by users of the park, and the purpose behind the application is when there are um, peak activities, such as evening football games and other things, which is not felt as capacity for park and four at the moment. And that's the end of the presentation. Okay, thank you. For those who uh, aren't familiar with the process, what will happen is I will now ask the public speakers um, to, to come forward and then there will be questions. After the questions, um, we, we will ask the speakers to return to their seats while the panel has a discussion. So, could I ask um, Judith Harley and Hazel Dawes if, if they would come forward and they'd like to speak against the meeting. Um, if I can just remind you that you've got five minutes between you and um, we'll, we, we, we will be timing that and, and we'll let you know when you've got one minute left. Is that okay? It's all right, I think we Okay, that's fine. So, thank you very much. Okay. Good evening, councillors and ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking against this application because I feel it's highly problematic it's asking the council to breach several of its own policies and strategies. SR2 of the Oxford Local Plan. Planning permission will not be granted for development where the open area provides an important green space for local residents. I think the 148 written objections demonstrate how important this space is to local residents. So that's breach. CS21 of the core strategy is about maintaining a specific level of green space. To be achieved by refusing the grant of planning permission that results in the loss of sports and leisure facilities, this would lose a leisure facility, the green open space, another breach. Planning permission will only be granted in such circumstances where there are no alternative sites. That's slightly puzzling because we're told this green space will only be needed temporarily for five years. So are we going to be sitting here in five years' time placing, oh, please, can we have an extension because there is no alternative site? If it's only temporary, why is there no alternative? Oxford Biodiversity Action Plan has a pollinator strategy. 
The officer's report itself says removal of the wildflower meadow is against that strategy. You really want to be known as an ungreen council who can't even keep to its own pollinator strategy. Flooding. The development is within zones one and two. The Environment Agency advises that Flood Zone 2 should only be developed in exceptional circumstances, the problem being hazardous substances. The officer's, officer's report states the site houses a number of activities that have the potential to cause contamination. Do you really want a contaminated site to then be flooded? Yeah. First, this application was first submitted in March. We still have no plans from the applicant as to how to deal with flooding in this extremely sensitive site. Do we really trust them to provide such plans? Please reject it. Chair, committee members. First, I'd like to correct page three of the planning officer's report, page 13 in your agenda. The last planning application submitted for this site was withdrawn less than two years ago, in November 2015, with Councillor John Turner saying that this site was not suitable for such an expansion at that time. Please ask me about the history of this at the end of my speech. I'm here to urge you to refuse this application, contrary to City Council policies, the most relevant of which is policy SR2, protected open space. Make no mistake, the whole of Cowley Marsh Park, as opposed to Plainfield, is protected open space. The City Council sign at the entrance says Cowley Marsh Park, it is not just a sports field, it is a park, it's protected. Policy SR2 is the policy which we, residents, officers and the East Area Planning Committee, have used for many years to protect the nearby William Morris sports field from unsuitable and unwanted development. The use of this designation has been wholeheartedly supported by planning officers and councillors alike. <coughs> Ignore policy SR2 for this application at Cowley Marsh Park and you will set a dangerous and unwelcome precedent for every other site currently protected by SR2. The expansion of the depot and its requirement for more space is being driven by the formation of a new private company, the City Direct Services, as discussed at the full council meeting of 20th of July. If space is really needed, then vertical ins expansion inside the depot, not horizontal expansion outside, should occur. Inside the depot, single-storey parking could easily be converted to two storeys. No decision apart from refusal should be made until a full feasibility study has been undertaken. Cowley Marsh Park is not an unused space. It is a wildflower meadow and protected. The city depot should move elsewhere, this should be made sure that it's not a permanent expansion. If you do approve, it should be temporary. Councillors have courage, show backbone, and vote to refuse this application. Put your local plan policies before greed, or at least defer this application, to satisfy yourself over policies, information, and alternatives. I would welcome any questions from the committee, or any invitation to comment further on any aspect of this application, history of the site, or the officer's report. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Can I ask you to just take a seat for a minute? And I'd like to invite, I think, um, we've got Thomas Edwards, who's, who's speaking for the application, and then we'll invite you back up um, to take questions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, committee members. Um, we'd like to uh, start this evening by talking about some of the um, ecological improvements that we're doing uh, within the uh, park area. Uh, there's been a lot of emphasis on what's being removed and not a lot of emphasis on how we're improving the area and what significant benefits that, that's going to have in the long term to the area. Um, we've set up quite clearly that it's a temporary uh, expansion of the depot within this area, and that's a five-year expansion, um, at which point the uh, 
wildflower meadow will be reinstated from what it currently is. Um, the wildflower meadow that's there was only planted um, about seven years ago, um, so it's not a historic meadow. It was playground equipment and uh, cricket nets in that area, which fell into disrepair through years of vandalism. Um, so once the equipment was removed, it was decided that some improvement would be done through some uh, wildflower meadow planting. It's not ideally located for uh, meeting the uh, council's policies regarding uh, pollination and uh, that, uh, the ecological benefits of having a wildfire meadow. So our ecological report set out uh, where the meadow would be better placed um, along the fringes of uh, the park. Um, and it should be noted that the improvement works that are carried out now, which include uh, bird boxes and uh, various other ecological improvements will stay in place in perpetuity and won't be removed as part of the temporary. Uh, so once the temporary extension is removed in five years' time, uh, you will have the benefit of the improvement works that have been carried out now, which uh, en are enhanced to what is currently in place, as well as reinstatement of the meadow facilities that are currently in place on the site. Um, Part of the existing meadow facilities, which uh, hasn't been mentioned, is a lot of the infrastructure that supported the play equipment and cricket nets is still in place. It's only the above ground uh, pieces of equipment that was removed at the time. So the cricket net spaces and tarmac are still found below the surfaces. So actually, as an area, it's not very well uh, established in that sense. Now, there were comments relating to flooding and drainage, um, and certainly this is something that we picked up through condition, and it would be our obligation to provide uh, a suitable, sustainable drainage solution that would meet all of the environment agencies' criteria in uh, mitigating any impact or uh, uh, contamination in the area. The depot is not looking to place any materials that could contaminate watercourses or ground conditions within this area, and they, they will be kept within hard surface and um, drain, suitably drained areas. Um, so there would not be a risk of the materials that could harm being uh, stored or located in any of these surfaces. The provision of a granular um, surface rather than a hard paved surface within this area would improve flood conditions in the area as it would provide storage facilities as opposed to the bound ground uh, or at least the uh, wildflower meadow, uh, which would be solid earth below, which wouldn't have the void capacity of a gravel surface. So we see that as an added benefit to the local area. Something that hasn't been touched on much is the car park. Um, the improvements to the car park, uh, and I think which was quite well illustrated there, the expansion is very limited. There's only a, a handful of spaces being achieved through the expansion and it's more the reconfiguration and overall improvement of the car park that uh, provides the additional spaces and provides the enhancement to the area. There's improved lighting facilities, there's improved fencing facilities, and general access and usability of the car park is significantly improved to the current uh, arrangement in place. The management strategy, which will be conditioned, will further enhance the facilities in the area and benefit the local residents by removing a number of problematic parking uh, areas in the uh, parking problems in the area on the street. So we see all of us and embrace the condition to have it managed uh, as a positive for the local community and part of giving something to the park and the users thereof. Okay, thank you. That was a fourteen seconds left. So would the previous two speakers like to Come back up the table, please. Um, no, please stay there. Yes, yeah, if you can, if you can stay there, and then um, if if there are any questions that, that we need to refer to you for, we will do so. So, um, from, from the notes I've made, the key issues have been concerns around the temporary expansion and seeking assurances that that will be temporary. Um, ecological concerns, which Mr. Thompson has partly discussed. Um, comments about possible other sites, and um, you know concerns that this could set a precedent around 
um, protection from the site. So I don't know if you could address those and then I'll ask the committee for their questions. Yes, I think that's exactly the, the correct summary of it. Um, I'll go, sorry, I'll just change the plan as you touched on the main, the main concerns are, are with the northern expansion. Um, we've already touched on the ecological aspects. Uh, as you'll have seen within the conditions and within the report, um, there is an enhancement scheme that is set out and we would require them to carry out those works. So we acknowledge that there is a loss, obviously, of the wildflower, wildflower meadow that exists um, in the location, but enhancement measures are proposed and that is considered in planning officers' view uh, acceptable in order to mitigate the harm that does arise from the loss of it in this location. Um, and actually, from the officers who have reviewed it in detail, the enhancement measures that have been uh, offered are in fact those enhancements, some, you know, offered in cases we get something where you're sort of just getting a, a light for light, there is enhancement actually to the ecology across the park here within what is being proposed. Um, the, the issue there, the more fundamental issue perhaps there is the, the loss of the space. Uh, it is part of the park, um, it is therefore part of the protected open space. The report acknowledges that, officers acknowledge that. However, what is before us is a temporary commission. It's also a commission which there is another need for. So it is not unheard of within planning that you have a conflict such as this and you have to balance those elements. And this is a, a, an example where we have to do that. And it is the view of officers that where we have a proven need for these extra facilities to be provided within the city to aid our recycling support and, and the other and that's weather issues that I touched on earlier, then when you come to looking at a temporary proposal, even though that temporary proposal loses open space, it is acceptable. Any future application will be determined on its own merits, as we say. Accepting a temporary commission does not mean we are obliged to accept anything else in the future. We'll have to assess that if it comes before us. Um, the, the, I, I understand the concern that exists around that, but absolutely what I would say as a assurance is if you know, any future application we will look at in detail at the time that it is before us, this commission would be temporary only, and you see there will be conditions relating to the restoration of the site that will have to be carried out um, once it's no longer needed for the purpose that uh, it's put forward. Thank you. Do we have any questions? But Mary and Alex, and then Dick. Ruth and David and John. Okay. But Mary. Okay, thanks, Chair. I've got um, four questions. The first one is about um, the depot site and asking whether we know what the prospects are for finding an alternative site for the entire depot within the next five years. And if that isn't found, what will happen to this land? I mean, if, 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 if you're saying it's temporary, then we should mean that it, it's temporary. So that's my first question. My second one is about, um, has um, a noise odour management plan been carried out? And if so, um, when is that going to be carried out? The third one is a um, comment about disabled parking. That the, the county say that the disabled parking space is, the dimensions are too narrow. Um, have um, our, our, our plans in, a place to make sure that, that does meet, um, meet, meet the acceptable guidelines. And my final question is about the cycle route. It says that, um, it talks about an enclosed, enclosing a route path, um, and says that the route is used as a cycle track, although that the official one is by Barracks Lane. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find which paragraph that is. Um, yeah, it's paragraph 8.43. Um, People have said it's a cycle track, although the, the recognised cycle route is runs to the north of the tennis courts along Barracks Lane. Is this actually a cycle track? And um, what, are, what are the implications if it is permitted for cycling if, if um, that's used? Okay? Thank you. Um, I'll respond, but it may be that in relation to the first point, the um, applicant's representative is better placed to answer um, in terms of future plans. And um, what I would say there is just reiterate what I previously said, is certainly it's a temporary planning commission for that extension that is proposed tonight. 
So anything else, regardless of what maybe the current thinking on plans would, would be assessed at that time. Um, in terms of the noise odour and management plan, the applicant provided additional information to the case officer and to um, our environmental health colleagues, which has been reviewed since that condition was drafted, which outlines measures that they have already put in place at the site um, to minimise uh, noise and potential odour impacts that could arise from it. Um, it also confirms that actually they haven't received um, significant complaints on their current operations. What I would emphasise in relation to, to noise and odour is that all we could be considering is any impacts that arise from this additional space, not from any operations on the existing site. Um, the information that, that has been given to and reviewed by our environmental health colleagues um, reassures them that actually there is no need for further plans to be submitted by our condition, hence why I would recommend that the condition was deleted, though obviously the committee members can, can take a different view on that if they wish to, um, because the measures that are in place on site at the moment are satisfactory to make sure that there's no additional material harm arising from this development. Um, in relation to disabled parking, absolutely as you know there's a concern being raised by highways and we've got condition 13 uh, recommended to ask for uh, details of the car parking layout, to ensure car parking layout is um, acceptable, and in relation to the fine point, to my knowledge this is not an official cycle track that we would be required to maintain, it is a piece of open space, um, so not, as we know here, there's, there's you know, a recognised cycle route that runs elsewhere, and there's not a cycle track across this part of the site that, that is official that we shouldn't be uh, blocking up. Okay. Does the applicant have anything to add about this point? Yeah. <coughs> the, the first point obviously uh, extends beyond. Oh, sorry. Uh, the first point uh, extends beyond our current scope and engagement with our client, uh, but we are aware that uh, they are actively pursuing uh, a solution which enables the depot uh, relocations within uh, the city, and uh, are looking to. Um, instigate uh, feasibility studies to cover that and uh, provide possible alternatives uh, and uh, identify solutions and sites that uh, would enable them to continue to provide their services without the requirement to extend or <coughs> remain on this uh, location. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we've got six questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've got two to the applicants, one to the objectors, and three to the officers. So if, you, if, you, if I'll do them in batches, That's um, fine. is that right? Yeah. Thank That's you, Chair. Fine. Sorry. Um, uh, perhaps if I start with the applicant, I'll two questions to the applicant, and then I'll do the objection, and then I'll do the officers. So, kind of up. so um, two questions on the applicant, for the applicant. It's about details on two key elements. Um, the officer report says that there's no <coughs> submitted detailed maintenance and management plan for the drainage. Um, you made much of that in your presentation, so perhaps if you could draw out why, why there's a difference between, between those two things. Um, and the second thing is, is another management issue. Um, the car parking is explicitly, the additional car parking is explicitly for um, participants in football um, in the evening, not for um, people working at the depot to be delivered in the morning. Um, I've just seen a health and safety issue, Dick, you might just kick the table leg, or it's going to collapse on you. Okay. Right. So if, he, if he suddenly disappears, um, I apologise for that. Um, so, this is going to be, um, there we are. Safety of council is, is restored. Um, if uh, so, it's, the um, the condition is, is uh, that a management plan should be put in place. And um, what form will that management plan take to prevent commuter and staff car parking? So those are your two questions. Okay. Um, surface water management plan. Um, this is something typically we would expect to come out condition in a planning application, um, as, as the designers we would uh, look to put a proposal together that would uh, satisfy both the environment agency and the local drainage board's uh, requirements. Um, I, I was able to discuss it at length because that's uh, part of the specialism that uh, I, I head up in a team. So we, we're very aware of how
having to provide this and are engaged with the uh, applicant in uh, providing a suitable solution and have touched on some of those measures that will already be put in place and have been behind the design of that, car, uh, of that um, area of hard standing um, and, and certainly has driven the, uh, the specification of materials. So we would provide a management plan in accordance with the Syria guidance uh, in terms of how that area would be treated and managed through the five year period um, to ensure that it operated in, in an effective and efficient way uh, through that time period. Um, the car parking management, um, again this is something that uh, we, we would expect to be addressed through condition um, having been raised. And uh, our understanding is the initial focus will be to speak to uh, the city in their current regime for enforcing parking restrictions throughout the city. Uh, it won't specifically be set for footballers, but those are identified as the peak use times when the car park is found to be full or unmanageable. Um, so putting in restrictions on uh, time limits or extended use of the car park would certainly help uh, mitigate those problems uh, of cars being left there for undetermined periods of time. Okay. Thank you. Um, my quest question for the objectors, um, it's a nice and simple one, notwithstanding the typo, what are the differences between this application and the withdrawn application 15 slash 01661 slash CT3? Okay, the difference is the extension of the car park effectively. Um, the space that's been identified as storage space is slightly bigger than that application because earlier this year, three of the trees were chopped down and in the applicant's supporting documentation, they have said, well, as the trees have now gone, we're going to straighten out our boundary for aesthetic reasons, mm -hmm. so we're actually taking a bit more space than we had in the previous application. So the site for the bin storage is actually bigger than before because they've already removed three trees. The previous application did not include the extension of the car park, it just kept the car park as it was. And if I can quote um, an email from Mike Rowley, sent to me on the 3rd of August 2015, regarding the previous extension, he says, Dear all, I had the opportunity to speak with Councillor Malik yesterday. He, Councillor Abassi, Councillor Tanner, board member for a cleaner greener Oxford and myself, I all agreed that the pro proposed depot extension should not go ahead. Indeed, Councillor Tanner and I discussed this and agreed not to proceed as soon as we saw the plans. We will look for alternative storage, but we do not believe it is appropriate to take public green space in Cowley Marsh Park, which, as you say below, the local ward councillors have made great efforts to improve. Best wishes, Mike Rowley. And as you know, our ward councillor, Councillor Saad Malik, who Alex is substituting for this evening, he is opposed to the expansion of the hard standing for the storage bins. He has said he supports the expansion of the car park, but as the whole is a single application, he therefore opposes the whole application. So our ward councillor is not in favour of this. So a long answer, but the difference is it's a bigger proposal than the one that was withdrawn two years ago, after getting a lot of public pressure, a lot of discussion with the councillors, and the councillors agreeing that this was not an appropriate expansion at that point. Therefore, it's not appropriate at this point either. I think I should point out why I'm substituting the council, now if I make my own mind up. Absolutely. Um, uh, questions for the officers then. Um, three of them, um, it's the easiest order to do this in. Um, First one is on the cycle parking, so it's a minor and technical issue. Um, says in the report, uses the words should be undercover, secure and enclosed, which suggests that it isn't, it ought to be. Um, is that something, that, does that mean that it must be, and is that required through condition? So that's the first question. Um, the second question um, is uh, policy XR2. Um, refers to the loss of um, important green space. That's obviously a subjective test. What is the subjective test of importance? Um, the final question um, is, there's been a change since the report was written, which you referred to in the in introduction, which is that the car parking element is permanent change rather than temporary. Now, I'm aware that most of the concerns reflect the, um, the other element, which is still temporary. But, um, in terms of the conclusions drawn by officers in, uh, in, in considering the issues, 
um, the issue of temporariness, if that's a word, um, was critical. Um, and now that some of the application is permanent, is there any difference in that advice? I might just take that last one first because it isn't, um, the application has always been on that basis. The application has always been on the basis that the car park is permanent and the extension uh, to the depot is temporary. The error was in the drafting of condition one that it didn't fully reflect what the application has always been for. So the application has been assessed always on that basis. Um, in relation to the first question on um, cycle parking, condition 14 is requiring um, the further details of them. It talks about any means of enclosure and they should be covered. Um, so the details of the means of enclosure should be submitted as part of that or will be submitted if it's approved as part of that application for the discharge of um, that condition. In relation to SR2, I think the key point is, and it is acknowledged in the report, that the site is covered by policy SR2. Uh, we do acknowledge that it is an area um, that, is, uh, that meets the definitions within that policy. And as it talks about um, paragraph 8.2, we do say there that there is currently green open space and it is protected by policy SR2. So the provisions of that policy do apply to the assessment of this application. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Yeah. Okay, Dick, I think you were next. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I've got, um one question, if I may, to the objectors, and another one, I think, really, is to the the applicant, but the applicant that's behind you, the, the actual people who run the um, the recycling centre, um, the waste centre. Um, so perhaps the first one. Uh, there's two issues. Here. One is about land grab, if you like, loss of space, which is a completely separate issue from ecology. The one I'm asking about is, you about, is the ecology. Um, the point has been made uh, quite well, I think, that yes, this does involve the loss of a wildflower meadow, but that wildflower meadow grassland is, is only seven years old. It was uh, put on top of um, uh, cricket nets and stuff like that. 0.1 of a hectare, and what's proposed is actually 0.3 of a hectare to replace it, so this is an enhancement. Um, I've looked at the plans quite closely, I have concern about uh, sort of wildlife corridors and things like that, but I, I, I'm not an expert, I can't see much, and uh, nobody said much about wildlife corridors, much has been said about bees, bees can move quite happily, they Probably, probably not terribly bothered about where the wildflowers are. So the uh, the point three hectare addition surely is a, is actually an enhancement. Um, and so I I'm not persuaded actually that the loss of that particular bit of wildflower, which it's been said isn't actually necessarily in the best place, might be better somewhere else. It obviously means involves a land grab, uh, and that brings me to my second question. So my question to the the objectors. Um, but, Chair, yeah, you've, you've pointed to CS2 uh, as being very critical, and uh, the first part of CS2 is open space will only be allocated for development if a need for that development can be demonstrated. There's a lot of things that we would like, but there's a big difference between something we would like and something we actually need. And um, clearly, it would be nice if um, our services can put wheelie bins or somewhere in that place, it would be convenient, but that's not the same thing as a need. And I think, because of the nature of this open space, uh, the fact that the population in this area has increased and is continuing to increase, the demand on uh, protected those open space is increasing. I think it really behoves the applicant to demonstrate that it's a critical need. You're not telling me that you can't put wheelie bins somewhere else. So why do they have to be here um, because that is absolutely critical to satisfying core strategy two, which you've already identified as a key issue, and it's about the need. Um, really, it's a question, I think, to the applicant as to why it has to be there. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes, can I maybe pass that to Sean and if not the applicant as, as to why, why does it have to be here? I just respond on a point of um, policy, which is just looking at the wording of policy CS2. Um, I'm, I don't see that as relevant to this application because what that's talking about is other areas of open space will only be allocated for development if a need for development on that land is demonstrated. This site isn't being allocated for development. We've got a planning application proposing development on it, and the other relevant policies are discussed in detail then in the report where we talk about, yes, it is protected open space, um, and there is a reference then is the, uh, sort of coming on to the point, talking about policy CS10 about the need for waste recycling facilities within the city. So my own view is that CS2 is not directly relevant to this application because it's talking about how you would assess whether or not to allocate a piece of land. So where we say, you know, within other planning documents, we have areas of land that said this is what we want to see here. That's allocated for development in that manner. Um, what I would say then on the need is, is officers are of the opinion that there is planning policy and, and supporting documents to demonstrate that we do have a need for these types of facilities within the city. Um, the applicant may be able to provide a bit more detail as to where that's been driven from. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that a lot of that's driven from our, our, our desire, the council's desire, to re recycle more of our waste. And diverting waste streams out of our residual containers requires us to have additional containers for householders and businesses, etc., to, to put recycler in. And the desire to do uh, weekly food waste collections, uh, again, has, has required us to have more... Uh, more need for, um, for containers to put it in and expand that and try and achieve the levels of recycling that, that the council wants officers to do. Um, and I think also on the, on the area of um, uh, flood prevention and, and snow, etc. like that, to have um, uh, them facilities where the vehicles are, makes absolute sense um, to, to respond in an appropriate, timely manner. Okay, thank you. Can I ask Councillor Walters query on biodiversity? Um, I didn't think Councillor yeah, yeah, was yeah, actually yeah. asking the question on Councillor yes, Biodiversity. Yes, I was just making the point about it, but if he has a clear question, then mm -hmm. I'm happy for you to answer it. Yeah. Um, I would like to pick up on something I didn't have time to talk about, which Councillor Walters raised, which is the wildlife corridors. I'm not happy with the ecological survey. I cycle through that area frequently. And I have seen both badgers and Mount Jack deer. So I query the idea that that does not provide connectivity for wildlife, because it does. OK, in that case, I'm going to take Chair's prerogative. And can I just question the ecological survey? And um, you, you know, perhaps, perhaps you could address the issue of badgers and Mount Jack, Mount Jack deer. And you know, if, if they were you know, how, how the ecological survey was, was conducted. The survey has been carried out, you know, in accordance with the correct practices and reviewed by our uh, biodiversity ecology specialists um, within the council who are satisfied that it's looked at the correct things. So not all sites obviously have to look at everything. Um, again, I would point out that this isn't a loss of the entire park, so there will be the ability for wildlife to be within the area. Um, there's nothing to demonstrate that I've seen that shows that this particular space is providing a particular wildlife access between two connected parts of um, green space or, or other wildlife interest space that will be lost by this application. And that's not what's come out of the review by both the applicants consultant but also by our own city council and specialist officers in regard to that, that that's not a relevant matter for this development on this part of this site. Okay, thank you. Perhaps we can move on to Ruth with your question. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of things, really. The, the first one is, um, paragraph 810 talks about whether or not policy SR5 applies, and I got a bit muddled when I was reading that, and I wondered if the officer could advise, because it seems to show that part of the site might be affected by policy SR5, and some of it might not. So I'd just like some clarification on that. The second thing, and I don't know whether you can answer 
to this or not. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that this space is being used by those who want to do sport and those who do not want to do sporting activities. And it seems to me that what's being envisaged here is for all the sport to be transferred to the, to the park, elsewhere in the park, which leaves much less percentage for people who enjoy the open space and don't necessarily indulge in sports activities. I don't know whether you have any percentages that you could um, answer that question with. Because I'm, I'm very confused. I've, I've read all the responses, every single comment that's come in from people on this application. And there seems to be a discrepancy between the amount of use of the open space that the report talks about and actually how much the residents feel they, they make use of it. And I don't quite understand that. So that's clearly an important part of why people use the park. Um, there were just a couple of very small things um, that came up in the letters that I can't see answered in the report. The first one was somebody was worried about the safety of the new pedestrian access, which I'd just like to ask about. And um, the second thing was one resident wrote in and said there are no evening football matches. I don't know what's going on here. So I would like to ask for the evidence on that. Just reading, sorry, paragraph 8.10 before I come back to you, if that's okay, just to make sure I'm here. My own reading of that is that I think the point that is trying to be made is that we acknowledge that the site does provide, although it's not a protected, um, it's not protected in both uh, uh, policies, it does provide both immunity facilities. So it does provide open space for uh, the local residents and it does provide sports facilities for local residents. And that's the point that the paragraph is trying to make. And in its, in its conclusionary line, what it's essentially trying to say is that the protections that do exist for that space re remain, whether or not this, or if this planning permission is granted, rather. So its um, allocation as under SR2 remains, even if this um, planning permission is granted, i.e. once this is done, temporary period is over, that's what it's got to go back to. By granting the temporary permission, you don't make this into a permanent part of the, the depot, basically. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to work out is whether policy SR would be a reason for refusal. So, S R2 would be, SR5 wouldn't be, because it's not protected by that policy. SR5 is black and white. If it's in the, if it's protected, if it's allocated in the proposals map or local policy map, then it, the, the site could claim the benefit of that policy and therefore it would be a relevant consideration. But it's not, as I understand it, on the proposal map, on the policy map. So it doesn't have the benefit of the strict rules of that policy. SR2 is a judgment call for you to make. So you've been told, is it important? The presumption is against development. And then there's a second link to SR2 about alternatives. So one, one is a judgment call and the other is a, is a factual matter. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, did you have another question? There was, there was a, one, was, one was on percentage of sports versus non sports I don't have a percentage, no, in terms of, um, like the applicant may do, may want to ask them whether or not they know, but I, I don't have a figure um, as to how much is. I would say, though, that that's a, an issue that already exists um, within the site and with, exists within many parks. You've got different people using it for different purposes. Um, there isn't, to, to, in officers' opinion, the, the area of 
this application within the whole of that park does not result in uh, uh, such a material increase in conflict of uses as to, to make this unacceptable in any planning sense. Um, I understand the point and I understand why that might be a concern of residents, but I don't see that there's anything um, in either planning policy or legislation that uh, makes that a relevant consideration um, in this application, given that the majority of the park is being maintained. It would be a different story if um, you know, the whole park was under uh, the proposal or something like that, but in this application, this discrete part of the park, I don't see that there's a planning basis for that concern. Um, Safety is covered in 8.43, talks about um, pedestrian access and, and paths, etc. Um, it's not felt that there's any particular, or that there's any um, safety issues arising from this application, this particular proposal. In relation to the evening football matches, I'm afraid it may be that there is obviously a difference of opinion by people what um, the application is not being recommended solely on the basis that officers think there are even football matches that make this pressure. That's what's been identified as a particular peak by the applicant in their submission to us, but in the mind of officers, the expansion of the car park is acceptable, even if evening football matches don't actually occur on the site. If I can also just clarify one matter. We started to talk about it, it implied that it was a permanent change. I just want to make sure people understand it is a temporary loss of space which will be returned to open space and therefore the issues that have been raised about sport or leisure or the openness etc will return. Members need to bear that in mind in their decision making process. Yes, thank you. Could I uh, offer a point of information? If it's very brief, but this is really time for, for members of the committee to ask questions yes. rather than additional information yes. being given. With SR2 and SR5. Um, uh, well, we've already had the information of SR2 and, and SR5 from our, our, our legal services. And the SR2. And, uh, sorry, excuse me. And unless you wish to, to argue with, with our legal services, then I think we probably... I do on one point. Okay, well this will be interesting. Okay. But SR can please keep it very, very brief. SRP protection applies to William Morris Sports Field. There is a precedent when part of that, the car park, had an application for development. It wasn't for the whole site. That application was refused on the grounds that it was part of SR2. Sorry, can I, sorry can, I just, can I just stop you here? Because we can only consider the application that's in front of us. And I think, sorry, no excuse precedent. me. And I think that um, discussing William Morris Sports Field within the context of this application is probably not helpful. And I think we, you know, we do all have homes eventually to go to. So thank you for your for your point. But I think we have to draw a line under it. Ruth, had you asked a question yes, you wanted to thank ask? You. David, would you like to go for? Uh, Chair, my question's been answered. Thank you very much, uh, John. Do you have a question? Uh, yes, Jeff. Um, just to show that I've read the report. On, on, on paragraph 8.4, um, it says in the second line, <coughs> recycling is given high priority over landfill in order to reduce land take and environmental consequences of this and so on. Given that uh, the City Council has been sending our rubbish um, to an incinerator at Ardley for the past three years, 90% uh, of which is burnt and not going to landfill. Um, is there any particular reason why this um, is written as it is? Uh, I know this report's been around for some time, but it seems rather out of date. Uh, and it, if, if it's been put forward as an argument to say, well, although we're saving land here, it will save la uh, landfill elsewhere, that isn't true, is it? Uh, in response to say the relevant parts are taken from what is the planning policy aims in terms of waste management and recycling facilities. So that's where that uh, has come from. Waste management as it is operated by um, colleagues elsewhere in the, uh, the council is not what we're considering tonight. We're considering whether or not this application is acceptable. And with planning policy support for a push in terms of recycling, 
that is officers view that there is a, a planning policy basis to drive the need for this stuff. So, so are we to understand that officers lived in the, in the past and in Cloud Cook land? Chairman, now I'm sorry to come in. The officers explained the purpose of the policy, and that's a matter for members to, to take into account, and let's leave it there. Yeah. Yeah, but what I'm, I'm trying, what I'm trying to get clear, Chair, is whether the officers agree that our waste is now sent not for landfill, but for incineration. But the, sorry, excuse me, the officers have already made clear that actually the, the purpose of the expansion is, is for equipment, so things like you know, additional bins and also equip, um, equipment that's needed for severe weather, not recycle it in itself. So, are we to take, are we to, is it now the officer's advice that we should disregard some of what is said in 8.4? Chairman, what is set, set out in 8.4 is correct. I appreciate the, the issue that the member is referring to where we fit send some to the or incinerator is, is secondary. The prime purpose of the, the policy is for to recognise the importance of recycling. That's that's a fact. Yeah. Ably defended. <laughs> okay, do we have any further questions, Ben? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I was just going back to the recommendation, really, the recommendation uh, 11B, um, where we were looking at delegated authority to the head of planning, sustainable development, and regulatory services to finalize what's related in there. Um, the question I'd like to ask is is it possible to request that the chair is involved? in this as part of a process, just to be sure that uh, whatever conditions that you have agreed to tonight uh, actually is verified and overseen. Good idea. If, if the chairman believes that it's necessary to oversee the discharge or the final product, all, all I would say is, is there some exceptional case here against your normal processes that you've established through the delegated matters to, to the head of planning. Uh, and um, at the moment, this is not an, an exceptional case I would compare against all the others. So I appreciate members just see these ones at this, this committee, but there is another committee where the, the approach is taken, and this is consistent with that approach. Uh, um, so I'm a, a bit of a, a loss of why we need to change that position here. Can I come back? Yeah. Well, um, the reason why I'm requesting this is because if it is kind of like a third party or outside of application, you know, I would have doubts or some concerns about it. We do request the uh, chair to oversee it. But in this instance, we're actually looking at some of this in house. And because it's partly in house, I'm slightly concerned about you know, maybe things not happening the way that you know, it's been stated. So, which is why I'm asking to say that I'm going to give the whole authority to the head of time, every type of group through which that would be overseen. I would, I would hope that we could trust our officers as councillors. Um, Alex, you would well, you know, make Just a point of clarification. Um, I've sat on West Area Planning Committee um, mostly, um, made occasional appearances here. In rare occasions, and I'm thinking of a large number of applications to do well by um, conditions were delegated to officers with um, consultation with the chair, so it isn't it isn't setting a precedent, and it's not out of um, keeping with practice of the other family committee. Well, that's what I said. Yeah. Can I just answer? Yeah. Uh, there's a nuance of difference, really. Uh, you can't delegate authority to a single member. That's unlawful. So. Yeah. Uh, the word that was used by the councillor was oversight and the final decision. That's not awful. No. What Councillor Holling was suggested is different, it's not the same. Uh, a member being consulted yeah. is lawful, but um, I support what Mr Holland said, it's, it's, it's not the usual. Um, but there is a difference between delegating, which you can't do, and consulting, which you can. Okay. Okay. Chairman, I, I, I still. still I still need, no, Chairman, I would like to still come back. It, it is trying to get to some consistency in your decision-making process. I know this is a, a fine point here. 
there are other committees where we have our own applications come to committee and officers oversee those discharge of those conditions uh, and they are applied in a consistent professional manner in the normal way as any other applicant. In the, it, by turning it around because it's the council's applicant, that implies that uh, we would take a different judgment. And that's something our profession now finds not acceptable. Uh, it, it, we have highly trained officers, they apply the, the rules consistently, whether it is a, a resident or a big commercial development. And that, that is uh, uh, a quite a sacred line to which to, uh, officers need to abide by. And therefore, I would endorse you not to go down that route in this instance because there is no exceptional circumstances as I see it. And I apologise for making an issue of it, but it is important. Okay, thank you. I, I, I don't see that there will be any need for that. Yeah, I just have a question, a more of a, a kind of a point of information. Why was this put forward as one application? It just seems to me that the issues that are covered in both are, are so separate that it would have been better as two applications, just for future reference. But if you have an answer to that, I, I'd, I'd like to hear it. It may be for the applicant really to answer. We determine what's put before us. So it came to us as one application. We have to deal with it as one application as to why they've chosen to do that. I, I couldn't comment, but they may be able to. Okay. Um, yeah, quite simply, the application was put forward as a single as uh, these both elements of work have been identified and uh, budgeted for within the uh, current cycle um, and uh, we did not see uh, any concerns or problems taking forward the two applications together as one and the facilities and uh, improvements that we're providing in both areas um, significantly uh, <coughs> improve and enhance the, the, the park and uh, its users. So combined, it provides significantly more enhancement than individually. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions on points that haven't already been discussed? Because we've had a fairly, <clears throat> I think we've had a fairly very, well, I think we've had a very broad ranging um, discussion so far. So if there's no more questions, um, could I ask that the applicant and the opposers return to their seats and thank you all very much for your input this evening. <coughs>
Ben and David. And Ruth. And Ben Ruth. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the first thing to say is that City Works in this constrained site is doing a fantastic job for the people of Oxford and uh, the uh, improvement in recycling is, is in uh, great part being helped along by, by them and made possible. Um, and they're also winning contracts which helps the finances of the council so that we don't have to put up the council tax and we can do a lot of other things. So, you know, let's, let's, that's the background and I think that's import it's important that that's said. Um, having said that, I think this is a very fine judgment and a, a balanced judgment uh, because we are losing uh, park space. Um, uh, there's no doubt that the that City Works does need more space for storage of, of uh, recycling bins and for the new opportunities of trading uh, which will benefit everybody in Oxford. Um, the question is whether it's here or whether it should be somewhere else and I'm not convinced um, that the argument has been made strongly enough that uh, it should be here. Um, the other point I want to make, uh, Chair, is about your comment about temporary. I've been sitting on planning committees for a very long time and plenty a lot of other people have around the table and you know that if you can't get something through, make it temporary because the chances are the next time it's considered, it will probably go through. Uh, because let's look at what we're intending. Sooner or later, and, and for many years we've been trying to get a better site, City Works will be sold off for housing uh, and we'll move to another and better site. And the sooner that day comes, the happier I should be. When it's sold off for housing, the temptation to continue to build housing on this uh, little corner of land will be quite considerable. So, um, although the decision is for a temporary permission, I think in practice, uh, unless you know, history is totally misleading, is that it could well be longer than that. I would so, well, yeah. Jay, I think you made your point. That mm. you're technically well, I, may have, right. I may have made the point, but I'm also chairing this meeting. And the, applicant, the application that we have in front of us is for temporary permission and that's you know according to planning law that's what we have to consider we, we may all have our own personal feelings about what may or may not come out of it but in you know in in, in the context of this meeting that's probably not something that that's you know we can take into account i'm afraid um, the uh I think the chair is absolutely right that uh, what we're asked to consider is a temporary permission. What I was saying was that in my uh, limited experience with councils, the temporary sometimes becomes longer than that. Um, and I think that's incontestable. But I agree with you that it's not a planning reason for refusing. Uh, I'm not suggesting that it is. And I'm not going to make a proposal, certainly at this stage, but I will say that um, I will not be voting in favour. Okay, thank you. Who is next, Dick? Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, for me, this comes down to uh, need, the question of need. I fully accept that uh, um, City Works are expanding their work. They need places in Oxford, that's, that's clear. Uh, that's not particularly relevant because what the key question is, does it need to be here on protected open space? It would be convenient, but is it needed? I'm not at all persuaded, and I have to say I really struggle to understand how this is not development. I do understand that it's temporary, and that at the end of this temporary period, it will revert to presumably protected open, uh, open space, uh, which theoretically could be reinstated. But uh, to me, this is, uh, this is, it is development, and it's got to be called development, that's what it actually is, albeit temporary, and the need has not been demonstrated, I'm afraid. Um, you know, it's really as simple as that. Okay. Alex. Uh, yeah, um, I want to address a couple of things, um, I think. Um, I think what, what John and Dick have said, and, and I think that the officers in their report have made this new in, in, in your introduction. Right? It's, it's, it is a finely balanced position. We have to weigh up two policies against one another because in this instance they contradict one another. We can't support one without supporting the other. And the issue does then come down to this demonstration that this is the best site or the only site or the most appropriate site. Uh, and those are subjective 
subjective issues. Um, there is no doubt there will be a temporary loss of green space. Um, I think Dick in his long question to the, to the objectors made the point that actually it might eventually lead to an enhancement, um, but, but that, that's some way down the line. Um, I think that, from my point of view, what, what I think is probably the most relevant thing said um, was uh, one of the objectors um, who said, uh, in reference to uh, the previous application, which was withdrawn, application 1501, um, that that wasn't justified then. And I think that's right. It wasn't justified then, and that's why, why it was withdrawn. So the issue is, does that lack of justification two years ago automatically roll forward to be a lack of justification at this point? And I don't think you can make that assumption that that's uh, one application. This is a different application, and it is quite clear in the proposals that operationally, CityWorks is struggling to deliver the recycling service in an efficient, cost-effective, uh, and environmentally friendly way. Um, in its current constraints, um, and you know, applying the principle as I've always taken when looking at where housing should go, I've always said it should go next to Oxford um, in green lands. While I think if you don't have recycling operational expansions, it should be next to the recycling operation, not at some distance and other site. So I think on balance, this is the best site available for the required um, extension. What does concern me um, is the point that John Tanner has made about the temporariness of this. And, and clearly we can't make a decision um, that says that any future planning application should be refused. That, that's illegal. We can't do that. What we can do is ensure that the conditions, if this is passed, maximise the opportunity for this to be the temporary application that it is supposed to be. Um, and so, for example, the current wording of Condition 1 uh, is very strict in one sense. It says at the end of five years, it will cease to be used for storing wind bins, or whatever it might be, um, and uh, the land restored to its former condition. It doesn't set any timetable for that restoration. Now, we had an application recently on the West Area Planning Committee for a temporary uh, building um, on a playing field um, and the condition there was uh, much stricter in terms of setting a clear timetable for the restoration of the lost sports facilities um, uh, after the um, temporary use had ceased. And I think that's exactly the sort of condition wording that we need to look at here. This seems to me to be too, uh, too vague in terms of the restoration. And that brings me on to my second point, which is the issue about the conditions and the question uh, that, uh, that was asked by Ben um, and, the, and the response to it. It is always difficult when the applicant is the council and the decision-making body is the council. It's difficult for councillors who have to sit um, uh, on a planning committee like this, um, using their judgment in a quasi-judicial way. It is equally difficult for officers who have to erect a Chinese wall between their professional expertise as planners and their, uh, uh, their um, obligations as colleagues to other bits of the council. Everyone is appreciative of that, and I think any suggestion that uh, any officers, either in city works as applicants or the planning department as planners, have been anything less than exemplary professionals, I think would be completely wrong and unfair. However, it's also difficult for members of the public, because it's odd. It's the council acting as judge and jury, effectively. Uh, and I think it's really important to ensure there is transparency and openness wherever possible. So. Um, it was said by officers that there are no unusual circumstances. Well, I think the council being an applicant is an unusual circumstance, particularly when it's a highly contested and contentious issue, and where the council is, if it passes this particular application, going to breach at least one of its own planning policies. That's not the same as the majority of applications um, that are put forward by the council. Mostly they are in line with its own planning policies rather than breaching one. So on that basis, Either I think all the conditions should be uh, subject to the uh, test that I suggested, that of consultation um, with the chair of the planning committee, or if that's not acceptable, they should be brought back, and certainly the contentious ones should be brought back to this planning committee, as has been done with other applications, to ensure that they meet the aims and objectives uh, of this, uh, this planning committee uh, and uh, that. Uh, 
they are not watered down, adjusted, and so on. Now, it may be that they're exactly the same words that would have been agreed between the applicant and the funds. I'm sure they will be, but they will be in public session, and then, therefore, the members of the public can see that uh, the decision is being made in a fair and appropriate way, and I think there's a great deal to commend that as an approach. Ben, the next person. Chair, I'm going to find it really difficult to follow what Councilor Collins would have just said because those are the points I was trying to make. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to ask you to drop that. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I thought you meant I'm confused, Chief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. Okay, David. Uh, for me as well, it's, it boils down to SR2 and how I interpret the temporariness of this application. I agree that with Dick that uh, we do need to prove a need. I think officers and the applicant has achieved that. And it's a lot of open space, uh, if, even if on a temporary measure that I have a problem with. If a condition could be attached where a timeline was established, uh, where it could be reinstated within a year, for example, within a given period, I would be more comfortable voting in favour of it. At the moment, I am having problems uh, with SRT at the moment. Okay, can, can fans maybe answer that one? Okay. It's so, an extension of condition one to give a timeline. For it may be things. possible to do it within an extension of condition one or uh, an additional condition perhaps might be more appropriate so that we maintain one condition that makes it clear how long they've got as their temporary permission and another condition that uh, asks that we have set out um, prior to the end of that period because in fairness they may not know now what they, they want to do in five years time but before the end of that five years time um, we have a timeline established for them as to how quickly they will restore the land back to its former condition as required by the, um, uh, the initial condition, condition one. So effectively a, a, a scheme of restoration, if you want a better phrase. I think that would be something we could add in with the condition if members were so uh, Could we achieve that under delegated powers to your officer? Uh, you can be chairman, but given what uh, Alex has mm -hmm. suggested, then uh, that would fall within that remit too if members take that on board. Okay, Bruce, I think you wanted to raise a point. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank every member of the public that sent in comments because a huge number of people have replied to this, so it's obviously a very, very important issue. Um, I think policy CS21 and policy SR2 are the, the sort of key ones that I'm concerned about. And SR, um, SR2 does say planning permission won't be granted that results in loss of important green space for the local residents. There's the temporary and permanent thing that we've got to sort out. But certainly from what I've read, Residents are saying it's a shady place in the summer, it's a family space for picnics. I've got the students have said that they use it for jogging and running. There's amenity space for flat dwellers who don't have very much at all, they live close by. There's a whole range of people who've got in touch with the council about this issue. Um, I would make the point that trees are not replaceable. Once they go, they go. Um, they don't come back after five years. Uh, okay, they're talking about replanting, but it's not the same thing. Um, as far as parking goes, I'm not terribly persuaded by that either. I like the idea of bringing conditions back to see um, more about them. I'm, I'm still not sure about condition 12, um, which was about the management of, of important parking. I, I honestly can't see how that would work. Um, and I'm, I'm not persuaded about exactly who is doing this parking and only using uh, adjacent uh, roads. Now, is it definitely the sports players and the users of the park, or is some of it staff employees? In which case, there is, there is clear policy or, or clear guidance to staff that they, they shouldn't need to bring a car, as far as, I'm, uh, as far as I'm aware. So these are all comments that I'd like to make on this application.
Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any other points that they'd like to raise? No, I, I would also like to thank everybody who's come along, especially on such an absolutely foul evening. Um, I think I think this does does demonstrate that this is sort of, this is something that's very important, and, and it's it's important that we get it we get it right. Um, with regards to Alex's discussion around um, tightening conditions, would committee members be comfortable with identifying which which conditions and sorry I can't remember the word that, that was used and, and then I'll yeah. consult with the with the um, planning planners over ensuring that they're in place. Yeah I'm trying to remember off the top of my head but I think the specific ones would be one plus one A or whatever it's going to be um, the additional bit of one with the restoration plan. I would hope we could do a bit quick for 12 months, see a bit to a bit of hard standing, restoring the meadow. Um, so um, I think if, if the university can restore an entire football pitch in six months, we can we've got the meadow in quicker than that. Um, but anyway, sorry, so I think it's one, um, and then I think the parking one, which we through is 12, and it's the drainage one. Yeah, and then the drainage issues, because I think given the comments in the report from officers, those are clearly very significant issues. <coughs> Though it is great that Peter Brett Associates has a proper drainage engineer in charge of the project and therefore will be able to deal with those, I'm sure, very professionally and quickly. But those seem to be the important ones. I don't know if there are <coughs> any others. But I think the car parking and, and the restoration, the restoration and the time, time scale ones are the most important. Okay, so the ones that, that we've identified here are conditions 1, 5, 6, and 12. And the and 7. And 7. And the addition to um, condition 1 around putting in a tight time scale for, for restoration at the end of the five year period. So. Can I, can I check that everybody's happy with removing condition 19? Um, yeah. that's, that's because that's been, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a pre-existing facility and that's been dealt with in the, in the previous. Okay. Okay, and, and that will there will be also an additional condition which will become condition ninety around fencing. Okay, is it, is everybody on the committee comfortable with with that as a proposal? <coughs> Sorry, Chair. Uh, you just said that we're going to replace that condition ninety with another condition. What I was saying in introduction is we're, we're proposing to delete the existing condition 19, but I am also proposing an additional condition, so that will in effect just become condition 19, um, which is asking for final details of the fencing that are going to go up around the perimeter of the site. So we will still end up with 19 conditions. The last one will be about fencing rather than the OJO. Okay, and to, to recap, the proposal is condition one as it stands and its additions, um, conditions five, six, seven, and twelve will be um, managed with with cons um, so with consultation with with the chair of East Area Planning. Is is everybody satisfied with that? Okay, in that case, I'd like to suggest that we. We move to a vote on the proposal, so, and I would like to propose that we accept the officers' recommendations with the amendments that we've just discussed. So, is anybody, is there somebody who's willing to set up? So that's Councillor Pegg. So, could I have a show of hands for those who are in favour? Okay, for anybody who is against, so that's three, so the proposal is carried. Thank you very much.